Hello, welcome back to Wee Willie Wonder Falls. Today we're going to be making Henry's rubber ring. You can see from here it's very cute. Henry absolutely loves going in the pool, so this is perfect for him. We don't want him sinking. Right, so we're going to start with the ring part because this is quite a new technique. With most of our patterns we start with the magic circle, but for this we're actually going to start with a chain which is quite different, so we'll be taking you through how to do that step by step. Um, our instructions, rubber duck ring, make one in yellow, or any colour that you fancy. Um, firstly, we'll be making the ring section. We're going to chain 13, and then join the chain to make a circle. But it says be careful not to twist your chain, that's quite very important, because if it becomes twisted, uh, the ring doesn't work properly, and you have to pull it out and start again. So let's get started. This is the wool, it's a chunky and it's from the kit. Um, the Henry the Hippo kit is available at wewoollywonderfuls.com but if you have your own stash of wool then you can just download the pattern. Um, but this is the wool we're going to use. It's a 4mm hook. We always use a hook that's smaller than what the ball band says with our amigurumi because otherwise the stuffing shows through, which we don't want. We'll start by making a slip knot. So gently make a loop. And then this is the end that leads to the ball. So we'll just pop that through like so. And that's a slip knot. And we can alter the slip knot so we can pull it to make it the loop bigger or smaller. And we can pull up the loop to make it bigger. What we want is it just sitting comfortably on our crochet hook. We don't want it tight, that'll make it too difficult to work. And we don't want it really loose. Pop your finger on the, hoop, the loop just to keep it steady because otherwise it'll just spin around like that. So we're going to start our chain. To chain, we wrap the wool around the back of the hook once, and then all we do is grab it, use that, like, use that as a tool. It is a hook, and that's what it's for. So it's for grabbing the wool and pulling it through. And that's one chain, simple as that. So we're just going to carry on. So around the back, pull it through, it's quite easy, try not to let the hook split the wall. If you split it in half, you'll end up with a bit more of a messy chain. So try and pull the full strand at once. So just round the back, pull it through, round the back, pull it through. We don't want great big holes in our chain, but we don't want it really tight either. So that's, that's about right. If it's too tight, you'll struggle to get your stitches in. And if it's too loose, it'll just be all baggy and your, your um, stuffing will sew through. So it's just a matter of getting happy medium so you can get going quite quick. Pause and rewind if you get stuck. We do have a video tutorial simply for the chain um, on our YouTube channel as well. Now I'm going to count because I've lost count. I can't talk and count. So we don't count the knot at the bottom. It's a little bit that just looks like a flat knot because that's our slip knot. The, pe the stitches that we're counting are the clear V shapes with a line at each side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I must have been counting subconsciously. It doesn't normally happen. So what we're going to do now is join this to make a loop. So we're going to be really careful that we don't twist it round. Because if we do, it just won't work. When we go to work round and round in our circles, it, we just won't be able to do it if it's twisted. So I'm going to hold it flat like so, and then I'm going to fold it over and then I'm going to be working into the top. When we crochet normally you work under both parts of the V, but we can't do that because it's an initial chain so it's a little bit different. So you can see at the back, it looks different. All I'm going to do is work under the top loop, that's it, that's our stitch for this first round only. So we're going to ignore that little end bit there because that's the knot. If you try to get your hook in there, it'll feel really tight and very difficult to get it in. Um, so that's not, not the right one. So we're going to work in our first one, which is here. So we're just going to pop our hook in there and we're just going to do a normal double crochet stitch. So we're going to go through and then over. And that's one. Then we're just going to work in our top loop again. This is the next instruction. It does actually say um, rounds two to 60 approximately. Double crochet and continuous rounds, stuffing lightly as you work. So we're just going to go round and round in circles. Now it says two to 60 because what we're going to do when it, 
starts getting a bit longer is measure it around Henry's tummy because every Henry's tummy will be different depending on what your tension is like, how much you've stuffed him, if you manage to get in your fridge and empty it. All of those things will determine how fat he is. And if you're making this ring for a different wee woolly, you could make it any size because you can just measure it around the tummy until it's the right size. So I'm going all the way around. If you want to count your stitches, you can. If you want one out, it doesn't make a big difference because it'll just be, your ring will be slightly narrower or fatter. Try and keep it about the 13 there. You can count them. If you find you've got an extra one, you can do a decrease. And if you've got one short, just do an increase. So it does look a bit tricky when we get to the end. It's hard to work out what stitches are. Now that looks like our first stitch. Because you can see now we're back to what is a normal double crochet stitch that we will work on on the next round. Um, you can't tell whether that's a stitch. So what I'm going to do is count how many stitches I have. I should hopefully have 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've only got eleven, so there's two more I haven't done yet. So we've worked in that one. You can see because when we lift it, it's pulling up. So we've worked in there. So we're going to work in the next one. One. And then we need one more stitch. There's one little loop there. We're going to go in there. Oh no, hang on, that's how slip knot are going to work. On this. He's tricky finding your last one. There it is. It's that little one at the end. So we're going to work in there. So now we've got 13 stitches. Now you can pop a marker on there if you want. Um, personally with this, I don't think you really need one. Because we're just going to work round around circles. Doesn't matter if it's less or more than 60 rounds. Because we're working to the size of your hippo's tummy. So it is better as well if you've already stuffed and finished your animal. Because if you just do it to 60, you might stuff him, finish him, and then find the rings too tight. We don't want that. So next, what we're going to do is, you can see here, that's our first stitch of the new round. We're just going to go in there and just keep going round and round in circles. On the second round onwards, we work in as normal, where we work in under both sides of that V. So we're going under there for our double crochet. Like so. So what we're going to do is just keep going. Round, around, around, around. It's the type of thing you can do when you're watching TV. You don't have to concentrate too much because it's just round, around in circles. So what I'm going to do is leave you in a minute to keep on doing this. But what you will need to do, once you get to an inch or two long, start stuffing. Because if you're creating a great big long tube and you don't stuff it until the end, you may struggle to get the stuffing all the way down the tube, be awkward, and it's quite difficult to get it even. When you're stuffing, what we're aiming for is not tightly packed, but not virtually empty. We just want it like a very squashy marshmallow, because if it's too packed, it won't bend into a circle easily. Um, I'll show you here, look. So it's very squishy. So it's quite soft, but it keeps its shape, but we don't, if it's, if it's tight, it just won't bend very well, it'll be very stiff, so we want squashy marshmallow, that's what we're aiming for. So keep on going, and the next video I will meet you back here, when we will done a lot more of the tube. I won't keep you on the video doing that, because uh, you will be nodding off while I'm doing it. So I'll see you on the next video.